Hello and welcome everybody, your favourite boy is back again, King Dems here. This time we're going to take a look at DreamHack Open, yet we're going to do some predictions, hit you with some analysis, all that good stuff. Now we're going to breeze through Group A, because quite frankly it's not a super interesting group to my eyes. Game of Legion should probably not win a, a, a game here. Uh, they'll probably win a map, don't get me wrong, I don't think they're a trash team by any means, but... Probably the other three teams here should have too much for them. I'm just going to come straight out and say the teams I see going through here are big and mad. Mal's have pretty much looked disappointing pretty much ever since this lineup came together. Rops and Frozen look legit, but other than that, they just don't seem to be able to win series consistently. I'm not convinced at all by Acor, even though he's looked a little better in recent weeks. Um, he still has been so underwhelming since joining Mal's. Um, and obviously they're playing without Bemis due to illness and they have Chris J standing in instead. So not feeling good about this Mal's team. I'm just going to say Mad Lions and Big go through this group and not focus too much on it. However, Group B, that is where the interesting games are happening. As you can see, we have Ents, Fours, Spirit and Fnatic. And three of these teams, if you include Fnatic, basically have a new lineup. Spirit have got two new players, Forza have got two new players, and obviously Fnatic brought on board Smuya. Now, we're going to take a look at the opening series in a little bit more depth, and then I'll talk about who I think is actually going to go through this group. First up, we're going to take a look at Ents and Forza. Now, we've got to talk about Forza first because they have the new lineup. They brought in Shalfi and Norway, who have been tearing it up in sort of tier two, that sort of region of CS. They've been both doing pretty well. In fact, if we have a quick look here, both with decent ratings, 1.11 on the both of them. Both got decent numbers on kills per round, deaths per round, uh, impact ratings, decent, nothing special, um, but looking very solid. And so I think when you're picking players up for a team like Forza, where Zorta is clearly the star player and the carry of the team, especially considering that Flit left for Virtus Pro, Zorta is clearly the clear standout carry for this Forza team. I am going to be interested to see who they expect to step up outside of that. Obviously, Kenzie has decent statistics playing at the level Forza have been playing at, which is sort of hovering around that tier two, playing a bit of tier one CS, um, such as at EPL 14 when they get there. It'll be interesting to see who's going to step up and be that second source of firepower for Forza. They've always had quite an explosive style. Um, I really, really like Zorta style in particular, like uh, an Orpa who is still really good with the AK, also excellent with the Deagle, quite an aim heavy player, very explosive. I enjoy watching him play. So it's going to be exciting to see where Forza kind of go with this new lineup, who is going to step up. If I was to suggest somebody, I'd probably suggest Norway, just because seeing him on Singularity, he looked like a pretty legit player and has got some potential. I also think he's a little bit older than Shalfi, and so I would expect Norway to probably be that guy to step up if it's not Kenzie, but we'll just have to wait and see with this Forza side. As with Ents, we've heard a lot and seen a lot of Ents recently. Obviously looked really, really good ever since EPL 14 where they made that playoffs run. Um, they look really, really good at IEM Full. They look fantastic at the Major obviously made it to the legend stage, which was great play from them. And I expect to see more from this Ents as now they've risen kind of into that sort of top 10, top 15 region of the rankings. I expect to see more and more of them. They're probably going to get more invites now. Uh, and I really like the balance of their team. Spinx obviously looks like a very legit carry rifler. Hades, whilst he's shown the potential to carry on the AWP, I don't think they particularly play around him which kind of makes him a luxury player, and I like that for an AWPer. I like having an AWPer that can carry, but I think it's potentially a little bit more consistent unless you've got a real superstar like a Simple or something like that on the AWP. I think it's a little bit more consistent to not play around your AWPer all the time, particularly because the AWP is kind of a streaky weapon in general. It's like you're either on and you're killing everyone or you're not and you're whiffing. Outside of that, I just like the balance of the team. Um, I think Deja has been... Again, looking like a really good kind of one-two combo with Spinks. If Spinks isn't there, then Dika, Dicha, I'm not 100% sure how to say that, um, is generally bringing up the rear and fragging really well. 
Doto obviously takes a more supportive role, but I really like him in clutches. We've seen some insane clutches out of him. There's one at EPL 14 that comes off the top of my head where he was just tapping everyone's heads with the AK. And Snappy is leading really well and actually having some good games statistically, um, which is kind of not usually the case with Snappy. I usually see him as one of those non-fragging in-game leaders, but recently he's actually been putting in some pretty big maps here and there. All of that ties ends together as like a legit top 10 team in my opinion and i also think their map pool is really legit particularly blah, 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 blah. particularly if they can sort out their vertigo it's probably the one map that they play which is a little bit shaky apart from that i'm loving ends i think they're a great team moving on to the veto um i think this one is gonna be fairly easy to call i think we're gonna see forza ban vertigo we should see ends ban inferno forza pick ancient ends pick nuke Forza ban overpass, Ents ban dust too, and then we should get Mirage as the decider. Obviously, this is the caveat that Forza have a new lineup, so maybe their maps have changed. Maybe Vertigo is no longer their perma ban. I don't know, but we can only go on the statistics that we've seen here, and the veto seems pretty easy to predict. The only toss-up map is Dust Two. Forza haven't played it all that much, but they seem to be okay on it. They've won their two games of the three on it. Ents, it's a 50-50 map, so I don't expect Ents to ban it. So maybe we could see Dust2 come into the veto, but that's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting us to get Ancient, Nuke, with Mirage as a decider, but don't quote me on that, particularly with Fours having a new lineup. Now, as for my prediction, I've got to have Ents to take this one home. Um, they're a top 10 team. They look super legit recently, and obviously they have a stable lineup, which we can't say for Forza. However, I wouldn't write Forza off completely here, and I wouldn't be surprised if Forza pick up their map pick. They are a legit team. They are pretty explosive. They have that interesting CIS style, which I think is a little bit different from the European style. And often CIS teams who maybe aren't inside the top tier, like the Navis and the Gambits, when they come and they play in these European events, it often takes a map or two for these European teams to kind of figure them out, get a little bit of footage on them and, and see how they work. So I think this could definitely be an interesting game and I'm looking forward to watching this one. But I have to say, I've got to expect Dents to take this one. I'm going to say 2-1, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was a 2-0. Now, moving on to Fnatic versus Spirit. And once again, we'll talk about Spirit first because they also have a brand new lineup. They have brought in Patsy and Chiron in place of Chopper and Murr. Now, the first question is obviously who's going to be in-game leading. I can only assume it's going to be Sundar Young because I'm pretty sure he's led for teams in the past. Don't quote me on that. But that is the first question, is obviously Chopper was leading for them, so they have to pick a new in-game leader, and that's obviously going to cause more of a shake-up than if you, for example, just swap out two riflers for another two riflers. Having said that, Spirit were obviously having some issues. I don't think Chopper's calling was like particularly genius existence level in-game leading, so I'm not too fussed about having him dropped as a leader. And I'm going to probably voice an unpopular opinion here, but I am A-OK -okay with dropping Murr. I know that statistically he was a pretty good player for Spirit. I just felt that he took up too many resources and too much space. And we didn't see enough hard carrying from him. And particularly, we didn't see enough results from Spirit as a team to justify that. Gotta be honest, saw Murr as a pretty heavy beta. He would often sack his teammates' lives for frags for himself and it often felt like it was more of a i'm gonna get myself looking good statistically style rather than a i'm gonna ensure i'm as effective as possible in order to get the result style don't shoot me not the biggest murf fan what i think this allows and i'm really looking forward to is make dexter the star player dexter is a super super legit orper genuinely could be one of the best orpers in the world if he's facilitated i think just set the team up around him let him be your star player and let the others fill the gap we know that magix doesn't need magix magix oh, doesn't need a huge amount of space to be a really really good player and he's super legit actually i really really like him as a player i've seen him carry hard in games doesn't always take the limelight on Spirit, is happy to play a little bit more of a supportive role. Um, particularly when they are playing on T-side, he's often the guy who will run out first and make space. <laughs> and if there's one criticism I'll have of CIS teams is that there often aren't a lot of players who like to run out first 
in an entry kind of role and get their head blown off. Looking towards the two new players, Patsy and Chiron. Patsy in particular has been putting up some really, really nice stats on Spirit Academy. Definitely their best player. And especially in terms of his impact rating has looked really, really legit. I'm actually excited to see Patsy. I can't say much for Chiron. It's harder to tell with him. He's kind of been bouncing around not really even necessarily playing tier two, but like playing like a pretty low level of CS up until this point. Low in the terms of the pro scene, obviously still far better level than I've ever played at. So I don't really know a lot about Chiron, can't say too much about him, but I'm excited to see Patsy get his chance on the Spirit roster proper. Um, I think he could be a pretty legit pickup. Moving on to Fnatic, obviously Fnatic have a new lineup, but we've seen them at some qualifiers now. They've looked really, really good. Smoothie has looked incredible as an addition. We know Smoothie is a top tier AWPer. Let's hope he can settle on this team and not cause any problems. And another point that I think is interesting since Smoothie has arrived is Mezzi's actually looked a little better since Smoothie turned up. Mezzi looked really good in some of these qualifiers. Haven't seen so much from Brolan recently, but we know he's a good player. I expect Crims to take on a more supportive role, be an anchor on small sites, that kind of thing. But I'm actually really excited for this Fnatic team. I think this has a healthy mix. I think Alex and Crims can be that more supportive element to allow Brolan, Mezzi and Smuya to go and frag. I like the balance of roles on this team. I think it looks like they could be a legit team moving forward. I expect them to do well in this event and I expect them to do well in I Am Winter, which I believe they've also qualified for. But I digress. Now we got to take a look at that veto um fanatic are gonna ban ancient and spirit are gonna ban vertigo i don't expect those bans to change spirit maybe might change them new lineup who knows we'll wait and see i expect spirit to pick nuke and fanatic to pick overpass seems fairly obvious spirit will probably ban inferno if they don't they should they have sucked on that map for the longest time and yet still seem really willing to play it don't ask me why. Fnatic will probably ban Dust 2 just because they, they haven't played a huge amount of that map. It seems like if it's in the pool and why would they leave it up? But considering it's a semi lunar lineup, maybe they've worked on the map more. I don't know. And then obviously that would leave us with Mirage as the decider. Kind of a 50-50 map for both teams. Quick summary then. That will be a nuke overpass Mirage series. Now, as for the predictions, got to take Fnatic here. Even if Spirit had not made the changes, I would probably have taken Fnatic anyway. They look really, really good with Smuya in the team. I think that Spirit definitely have some hope, particularly if Patsy can show the same type of form he was showing in Spirit Academy. Then actually Spirit could like be pretty dangerous here. And if I were Fnatic, I would not be writing them off just because they have a new lineup. However, you've got to go with the safe pick and the safe pick is Fnatic. Now, looking to what I expect to happen in the rest of the tournament, I expect Big and Mad Lines to make it out of their group. I expect Ents and Fnatic to make it out of their group. If I had to predict at a final, I don't know how the brackets are going to play out, but I would expect an Ents Fnatic final. Um, honestly, though, outside of the groups, it's actually quite hard to call because I think Big, Ents, Fnatic and Mad Lions are potentially at a similar level mad lions probably a little bit back from the rest of the pack but big ends and fanatic all sort of the top 10 top 15 teams at the moment you would say with the potential to maybe progress and do more i see a little bit higher of a ceiling on ends and fanatic just because we haven't seen as much of them this big lineup we've seen basically in this form plus or minus one player for a long long time now and i think we know what their ceiling is Obviously, in that online era for a little bit there, they were looking really, really good, real legit, but it didn't last. And I think Big's level is kind of top 10 team, unless they got some more firepower in the team, because Tabson and Searson aren't quite enough to do it all. Unless Searson's going like Super Ham and Tabson's going Super Ham. The problem is, because Tabson kind of leads for the team, it doesn't happen very often. And Searson hasn't looked quite as imperious this year as he did last year. So I'm going to have to say, yeah, ends Fnatic final. You know what? I'm going to take Fnatic. I am really high on Smuya, not just because he's British, represent, but also because he's just a damn good player. And I think he's really going to take this opportunity to show what he can do at tier one. There we go. Predictions locked in. Ents Fnatic top two. Fnatic win it. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you haven't, Jog on.